Welcome back, everybody, to the College Express podcast. This month, we're going to be talking about the holiday season. I'm joined, as always, with Kara, and I have two special guests today. I have Marie and Peter. So, Marie, if you want to introduce yourself, say where you went from college and what you do here. Hi, everybody. I'm Marie, and I've been here at this company for four years now. I came right out of school. I actually went to a community college first and then transferred over to a four-year institution, uh, and now I'm the client solution manager here. I'm Peter. Uh, I am fresh out of college. I graduated only about four months ago from Champlain College. Uh, and I, <laughs> I've been here for a month and a half uh, as an accounting assistant. All right. So as you know, or if you're new to the podcast, we're going to be releasing a podcast once a month, and that's going to be the first week of every month. The way that that works is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will be a specific question with specific answers. But then Friday, the entire podcast will get released at once. So if you miss something during the week, not a big deal. You can catch it all on Friday. Or if you want to see those segments, you can do that during the week. So we're going to go right into that, and we hope you enjoy it. Thanks. All right. Hi. Uh, Question one. Uh, I'm stuck on campus for the holidays. What should I do to make it feel more like the holidays? Um, So I would say if you know well in advance uh, that you are going to be by yourself, either in your dorm or your apartment on college. Uh, Try to figure that out ahead of time and contact people way in advance to see who else is on campus at that time. Kind of get yourself a little bit of a roster uh, going so you have a mindset of who is there. Uh, I cannot say that I have done this so perfectly in the past. Uh, My senior year, uh, Thanksgiving, I didn't go home. it wasn't in the cart that year, and uh, I didn't really know that ahead of time. And I actually had a bunch of friends who were just around campus, and I didn't know that because it's kind of a strange message to send out and say, hey, did you go home like 80% of the school, <laughs> or are you magically on campus and conveniently able to hang out? Uh, so what ended up happening is I had a few other college friends that also weren't going uh, home from different schools, uh, so I guess high school friends. And uh, they ended up coming up to visit me, and we had this whole little uh, get-together Thanksgiving weekend in Burlington, where Champlain College is, Um, and it ended up being kind of our own thing, Uh, and it was a different experience. Traditions are kind of what you make them. There's no right or wrong way to do a tradition, so uh, as long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. Uh, Yeah, definitely. I think that that's the most important part is when you have this group of friends coming together or you have people coming together, don't, don't think that just because you're not with family that you're not with family. Mm-hmm. Your friends are going to be your family in school. And I know if it's your first year and you're an international kid, yeah. that's going to be difficult. But all the international kids typically are staying on campus during that time and the campus will be hosting an event too. So don't worry about that. The uh, Peter, I don't know. You mentioned you know, all your friends came up. Did you guys all grab different items and like cook a, a big meal together, or how how did that work? Uh, so I can't say we did too much uh, cooking. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we had a Domino's Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. uh, there you go. Shamefully. <laughs> uh, rest in peace, Cynistics. Uh, <laughs> but it was our own thing that we did, and it was so fun. I have really strong memories of that weekend, and I was really, really grateful that my friends, my good friends from high school, were willing to make the drive. And I, I thought it was fun cooking or no cooking, and there's certainly no turkey. Okay. It's not on the menu. Kind of going off what Tyler said with like international students, that can be a weird week, especially with Thanksgiving, because a lot of campuses will just shut down and they're like, you have to go. Um, and only international students are on campus. Uh, that's a good time to like go and find friends and say, oh, hey, you're in the area. You live nearby. Do you think I could go to your house for this holiday? And it's a great cultural experience, that's very true, yeah. which is what you're looking for when you do internet, like when you're studying abroad. Um, or you're going to a school abroad, um, like, fully. Um, I know for us, when I went to study abroad in Dublin, we didn't get Thanksgiving off because it's not a holiday there. Uh, But we still didn't have class the next day, so we all just got together. A bunch of people were, like, traveling the next morning, but we just did a big potluck. Someone brought hot dogs. We had turkey for dessert because it was cooked late. But it was a really fantastic, like Peter said, a really great memory. Like, 
I don't remember what I had for Thanksgiving two years ago, but I remember the dessert turkey that I'm going to be talking about forever and ever and ever. <laughs> and it's legendary in the Dublin, and, um, in, with Dublin staff too. So like take that chance to take on the cultural adventure um, of so like... Immerse yourself. In, yeah, immerse yourself. That's it. Yeah. Immerse yourself in like this new cultural tradition. Like find someone nearby and just be like, hey, like what's up, buddy? Um, does your family mind one more for Thanksgiving? Or people who know international students, invite them to your Thanksgiving. Because uh, it really does, it's not great to do, spend the holidays alone. That's uh, just, I didn't even think of that initially mm -hmm. until you said it. We have a family friend that is on, now my wife, I always say girlfriend, but <laughs> uh, her side of the family always had a student from Hong Kong. Uh, it was her brother's friend from college, and he comes up to this day every Thanksgiving. Well, that's awesome. Uh, and it's just, this has become a tradition now, so he's in the States studying for med school still, but every single year he makes the trek up even if there's a snowstorm any of that stuff he comes up and it's great just catching up with him and it, it became our, our own tradition yeah as you said and immersing himself in our family which is, is fun my advice would be no matter what so if you are having friends come up to visit you if you are meeting new people or if you are spending a holiday by yourself i would just say make the best out of it so make it really a holiday decorate go all out cook or or order some dominoes whatever your traditions are <laughs> Um, stay true to those and really just um, make the most out of that situation and really have fun with it. Yeah, for me personally, we had one year where we decided all that Thanksgiving was a little bit too hectic and family is um, sometimes family. a little bit too much <laughs> and annoying and you get those constant wow. questions of, hey, what are you planning on doing when you graduate? And it gets hectic, so we made kind of a bond, a pact to say, hey, let's just stay on campus mm -hmm. and why don't we do a big potluck? So we were in charge of getting the turkey and we were hosting it in our apartment. So we ended up buying a turkey and it was a great process. We have four guys living together. One of the guys had never cooked any, I think his extent is cooking hot dogs and beans. Nice. So, well, Isor, you're gonna jump in there, you're gonna take the gizzard out, and then Logan and I, we're gonna do the whole base thing process and, and rub it down with herbs and spices and cook it and then people are gonna come over. To this day, one of the best turkeys that we've ever made. I don't know how it came out so good, <laughs> but, then everybody else came in, we had mashed potatoes, carrots, and everybody came in. We had probably about 20, 25 people in our apartment, which was too many, <laughs> but uh, a lot of fun. And I think my favorite is we just put on music at the end of the night and uh, just like goofy dancing, having a good time. And it was uh, one of my favorite Thanksgivings ever, yeah. if not the most yeah. favorite. I don't know, most favorite, I don't think that makes sense, yeah. but <laughs> the best Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's another like thing, too, is that you might not be, like, stuck on campus. You might be happy to be on campus. So I, um, my sophomore, junior, and senior years, I went back early after because I, I could. Yeah. Um, so a couple of them, I was an RA. So I was like, well, there's, like, two days after New Year's before training, so I have to be up there early anyway. So I went up for New Year's, and I stayed with friends who had an apartment there. And I, I had never spent New Year's away from my family before. Like, it's always been me with my parents. We have a little party, whatever. And, I went up and we just like explored Burlington, um, did some fun stuff. Like my friends had a party one year. We just ended up going there, and I was like, "This is great!" Like, don't be afraid to like change up your traditions um, and you know do that new experience. I mean, one of the it, it's kind of interesting to see your college town too without all the college students. That's and when you're like too. there over winter break, it's kind of it's a little eerie, but it's in a good way. Um, so, you know, maybe if you're not stuck on campus, but you have the option to go back early because you have friends with an apartment or your campus just like allows you to go back early because it's apartment style or whatever, try that. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of cool. Um, and you might find new experiences that you like. Yeah. And, uh, to, I'm not a big decorator. I don't know if anybody in the room is, <laughs> but if you want to talk to that and decorating for the holidays and yeah. different ways you can. Yeah, and especially Christmas is such a big one. Um, put some roofs on the door, some lights everywhere. It just makes you feel just so happy and just warm inside. Put some Christmas music on. Marie um, is notorious for playing Christmas music. There is, <laughs> yeah. in fact, a sticky note on Marie's door right now that says... 
playing Office Christmas is music. open. <laughs> I'm playing Christmas music. Feel free to come in because she knows everybody is not in the mood for Christmas music right now. Yeah. Thank you for closing your door. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just turned up my, my, my favorite Christmas album today. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been listening to Christmas music for weeks. Number one, Snowed In by Hanson. Uh, Classic. Christmas pop. Christmas pop. Christmas pop. <laughs> Um, and you could also get a little Christmas tree yeah. up on the corner um, and just make it really feel like the holidays. That always makes me happy, yep. being surrounded by um, just the spirit of Christmas. And if you're going to get a menorah, make sure it's battery operated because candles are not allowed in most college dorms. That's a very good, good point. Yeah, good definitely. Point. Yeah, no, no lighting candles <laughs> every night. <Yep. laughs> well. teach, teach your Christian friends how to play with the dreidel. It's always fun. Yeah. We get very confused. <laughs> all right, so another idea you can do too is gift swapping. So you can have all your friends come up and you can do a couple of different things. You can have people come up and you can do the regular, hey, I bought a gift for you, you bought a gift for me, and then do that. Or you can do one of those, there's a white elephant, and then there's the Yankee swap. There's, there's all sorts of different things that are fun. And if you don't know what a white elephant is, because I actually didn't know up until... Maybe three. Do you not know at all? Mm-hmm. What is that? You don't. You guys don't know what a white. No. Is. Great. Okay. So <laughs> a white elephant is exactly like a Yankee swap is, where you pick a number out mm-hmm. and it rotates all the way around. The person that has number one gets to pick, and yep. the, gets to pick first and also last. Mm-hmm. So after all the gifts are given out, they can pick whatever is on the table. And so, I'll rewind just in case nobody understands what a Yankee swap is. Mm-hmm. But everybody gets a number, so it's one through X. You pull the numbers out, whoever's number one starts, they go over to the group of gifts, they pick a gift out, they open it, they show everybody, here's what I got. Number two goes, they open the gift, they show it, and then they can choose, I want number one's gift, or I want to keep mine. And then number three goes, and so on and so forth. Until the best everything... number is one, the worst number is two. Right, exactly, yeah. You do not want to be number two. Mm-hmm. Number one, after everybody has opened everything, gets to see everything open and pick what they like the most. And that's how the, the mm-hmm. regular one works. You see the exact same concept for a white elephant, except all the gifts are terrible. So you just find the craziest things that you can get, and that's what a white elephant is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't say the last one I did because there's a lot of inappropriate things, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So for a white elephant, you just go and you find the most bizarre, random things. Uh, it could be things that nobody would like. <laughs> Socks with tacos on them. Socks with what? Tacos on them. Socks with tacos? I might actually I would want those. that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just throwing yeah, out a bad, it could be, bad gift uh, idea. Yeah. Um, Plain socks, just regular gum. old j- j- tube socks. <laughs> tube socks, tube socks, yeah, tube socks. Oh, with, fake, with the, the um, t- oh. toes. Oh, oh yeah, those ones. I think those, those are uncomfortable. But uh, those are... Those two things are always really fun. The Yankee Swap is more traditional. It's There are good gifts in there. Everybody has fun. The White Elephant's really fun just because it's you, whoever has number one gets to pick either the best of the worst or the worst of the worst and, and have fun with it. So we like doing those. I, it, just the amount of things that have come out of those and laughs and pictures and, and, and great stuff. So you can do those. That um, makes it less materialistic too yeah. and just fun and, and proactive. Yeah. It, it, also to that point too is set a limit on those so it could be you know up to twenty dollars or if you're in college you don't really have that much money it can be up to five dollars and and so on and so forth so that way everybody's spending the amount and they don't feel cheated if they don't get a gift that's not equal value that they put in um, so those things are really fun and another way too uh, we, we talked about being stuck on campus is really if you're really stuck if there's a snowstorm or there's some sort of natural disaster where you you can't physically leave campus and you were planning on going home and visiting friends and family luckily we exist with the internet so hopefully the internet's still on if it's a natural disaster (laughs) but uh, you're you're able to reach out um, even if there's a landline you can call or if you have what's a a landline that is a local area (laughs) so uh, yeah it's a it's a very old technique of calling people, but you have that ability to reach out, especially across long distances. If you're in a college, like say you went out to California mm-hmm. and you, your parents live in New Hampshire, and 
you just don't have the means, the money to go back from California to New Hampshire with the money, mm -hmm. you can still call in and talk to them and it doesn't make you feel as alone. You can even have them put up, you know, your, yeah. your, your face on the kitchen <laughs> table and, and talk with everybody and you can be there virtually. So I think those things are very important to, yeah. to bring up. Yeah, when I missed Thanksgiving, um, when I was abroad, my family passed me around the table because they had an iPad and they, they put me down and we, we chatted for like a half an hour. Um, and I didn't miss my Thanksgiving dinner because we were six hours ahead of them. Um, or six hours, yeah, ahead of them. Um, but another thing is that if there is a natural disaster, like a huge snowstorm, and you want to get home and you have a car and it's like a three hour drive, um, don't do it. Be safe. Your parents probably want to see you home for the holidays but they would much rather you be safe don't go like the keyword was probably yeah <laughs> <laughs> they probably want to see you home. but like they they would much rather you be safe and three hours away than you be injured and in a hospital 25 five minutes away yeah. so like remember the keyword is safety um so if you hear like oh there's going to be a blizzard tomorrow and i have a final today so i can't leave Leave the day after the blizzard, not during the blizzard. Yeah, it's plan out it accordingly mm -hmm. is definitely a key. If you have the opportunity to have a few days off before the holiday starts mm -hmm. or whatever it is, and you know that there is a snowstorm coming, don't chance it. Yeah. Just leave when you know it's safe or yeah. leave after it's over. Yeah, I had, um, if you have like finals that end on by like Wednesday, go home on Thursday if there's going to be inclement weather. Don't be like, oh, but I want to hang out with my friends. Your friends are going to be there in a month when you get back. Um, go home and see your family. Get a warm, nice warm cooked me home cooked meal. Uh, do some free laundry. Like, There's a lot of benefits to being home. See the friends that you haven't seen in three months since you went to college. Like, Don't, don't put yourself in danger because you want to have like one last night of fun. There's going to be so many more nights of fun. Yeah, but definitely I'd say, especially in today's world, there's so many ways to interact and connect with people. Um, so hopping on FaceTime, even if it's Snapchat and sending funny videos or um, sending funny lenses and filters and things like that, um, but it can make you feel like you're really there and at home or with that person and spending time with them. So um, even though it might not be you know, physically next to each other, um, it's still nice to interact in that way. FaceTiming works for humans and your pets at home. Yeah. Uh, if you can get somebody willing to just show you your animal, uh, it also works. If I know a lot of people really, really like their dog, or I really love my cat, uh, so it was really nice to see him on the holidays. Right. And you need a human to operate the camera. Uh. <laughs> just a disclaimer. Just you know. <laughs> One caveat. I unashamedly... Uh, FaceTimed my pet rabbit many times while studying mm -hmm. abroad. I've seen a lot of pictures of your Yeah, rabbit, like, she, like mm -hmm. at one point my dad was holding the camera and like, it, your pets love seeing you too. Yeah. So like my dad was holding the phone down by her and she knocked it out of his hand and started like licking and like giving like kisses and everything. I was like, that's the cutest thing I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, it, it's FaceTime your dog. <laughs> it's fine, don't be ashamed. <laughs> Dogs and kids babies they all get so excited to see you <laughs> all right our next question is what is hashtag de-stress december what are some good ways to de-stress around this time of year this is a really good question i love de-stress december because it's the end of the year you have had almost 365 days of stress and exams and essays and more stress piled on top of you so now is the time to like let loose and let go especially with finals just around the corner in like a week or two you want to take time for yourself because you've probably been putting that off since before Thanksgiving. So that means like the second you put your pen down or finish a quiz or whatever, you go out with your friends, you do something fun, you do something you want to do. That could be like going and getting <clears throat> ice cream, even though it's the middle of the winter. I don't know, people in California probably still eat ice cream in the winter. Um, I still eat ice cream in the winter. Yeah, but you know what? I didn't want to walk through the cold in Burlington down the hill to where all the snow was and all the ice and all the wind and get some Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> you know, sometimes it mm. felt like that. There was this, yeah. this hill that we called Mount Main where it was literally like this steep and basically just going down it in the middle of a snowstorm, you're going down on your butt mm -hmm. pretty much every time. Um, but yeah, so like make, go get ice cream or something. Go to your favorite restaurant in town. Go try a new restaurant in town. Do something that's gonna make you feel good. Um, if you have it available to you, take a nice bubble bath. Um, take a nap. 
read a book you want to read instead of a book that's assigned to you. Um, just do something that's going to make you feel good because you, like I said, you need some me time. You need to take care, take care of you. Hashtag treat yourself. <laughs> Definitely. That's, I think, uh, you, you hit the nail on the head with all the relaxing things, mm -hmm. which I'll jump to later. Mm -hmm. But in terms of when you're going crazy with finals and anything like that, in, in that, in that vein with school and work, it, create a schedule. Uh, that's going to help you so much by having a calendar and seeing what you have to do and when it's coming. I feel like if I just have everything floating around in my mind and it's not listed in a specific order and here's the milestones and here's where I need to go, I feel way more overwhelmed. Whereas mm -hmm. if I hit the day and I'm like, okay, I check off the things that I needed to do today, I'm in the green, I can go out, I can you know, have a good time, I can relax a little bit. Um, and also definitely take breaks during that time. Uh, you'll go insane just sitting in front of a computer or working on something over and over and over again. And it's the same thing in the real world while you're working. Mm -hmm. uh, for anything creative, uh, what I do here, sit down, you look at it for long enough, it looks like garbage. Walk away, you come back, mm -hmm. it's not bad, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's come back to it. Let's attack it at a different angle. Yeah. So I think those two things, when you're in that vein and it's, doing yeah. all the work and doing everything, the, the planner and going and having breaks is a, is a nice yeah. touch. Yeah, I, I might not so much be the planner type, but I am the checklist type. Mm -hmm. So what's really nice about the end of a school year is once you have gone to you know the second to last or third to last class, you probably have a good idea of what all your assignments are for the rest of the semester. Mm -hmm. So you can put them all down on one giant checklist. And that will be a little overwhelming the first time you look at it, but every time you check off something, you get closer to finishing everything. And it's just the best feeling in the world for me. That's something I did the last of my semesters at the end of every semester at least in my senior year it's really helpful another thing i would suggest like what first comes to mind with de-stressing is yoga so like getting in there again your namaste on um relaxing maybe some nice scents but really any exercise can help take your mind and your brain away from all of that and really just focus on you and take some you time so i find that after a good workout or after yoga something like that where you can really just de-stress and get everything off your mind then going back to a project you really do come in with a whole new outlook and like tyler was describing you're like ready to go back into it and with a, a new outlook yeah i'm uh, not flexible at all so <laughs> yoga is not a uh, top of my priority list however turning off the lights and screaming into a pillow really loud. <laughs> there's a, a college that does that. i don't remember really? what college it is but they or maybe it's a few colleges but they open up the window at the same time at like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock and they all scream yeah yeah i forget what that is uh we do have an article on yeah. college express about that so search for it because <laughs> yeah it's definitely on Wait, we can put it in the... In the um, yeah, I'll put it in the description. Yeah. In the description. Yeah. But what if you didn't know it was about to happen? And then all oh of my sudden, gosh, you're going to have to be afraid for freshmen. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> um, another thing to do with kind of going with studying and everything is, you know, create a study group. I had um, my first final freshman year. My friends and I got, all got together because it was a spelling test of the most commonly misspelled words in the English language, like the top 100. Um, because being a, a writing major, that's what we did. Um, and we just got together and we took turns reading off different words um, from the list and it made it less stressful. It made it fun. I had a bit of a breakdown. I got to the word dumbbell and couldn't stop laughing for literally 20 minutes. <laughs> no idea why, but I was like, this is such a funny word. And they like, it was my nickname for in the next couple of weeks or something like that, <laughs> which was fine with me. It wasn't like in a teasing way. It was in a friendly way. But, like, it relieved so much pressure after that, and we managed to get through the list, and I think we all passed the final. Oh, it was five, five six years ago, so. Yeah, no, no thanks for that. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, the you guys kind of said, like, go do your own thing and, like, have mm -hmm. fun. We always joke that my brother-in-law is very much... Uh, and you've met Elliot a few times now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very straightforward, and you have too. Mm -hmm. Very straightforward, lawyer. He's always very buttoned up and doesn't get out of his comfort zone. And we know when he's stressed because he's in the zone, nothing's going on. The most satisfying thing in my life is seeing him have fun. <laughs> because when you just see him get really loud <laughs> and animated and getting into something, you're like, nice. You're getting out of your comfort zone. 
So get out of your comfort zone and try to forget about all the stress that is on top of you. Not to say forget about it completely. It's still there, but go off, have a good time, come back, and it's been mentioned multiple times, you have that fresh feeling of, mm-hmm. okay, now I can tackle this problem, now I can get through it. And uh, I think that's, that's huge. And you mentioned exercise. I think exercise is a big thing. Uh, if you just go out for a run or, like I said, screaming, you're punching a bag, wh- whatever it is to just get out that negative energy that you have in yoga, the breathing exercises are there for getting negative energy out. So whatever is your avenue to do that, do that and do it frequently yeah. because it's going to help significantly. Yeah, and saying that you know, different people handle stress in different ways. Uh, everybody is generally very stressed in December. That's something. If it's mm-hmm. finishing your finals, if it's your professors having to grade your finals, mm-hmm. if it's you know the snow that is a problem if you live in the north, if it's the days getting shorter, everybody has a lot of things going on. Um, and so just because somebody may appear less stressed than you doesn't mean that they are. Everybody has their own unique stress, and it's about finding a way to resolve that. All right, why volunteer? Um, This is such like a um, big concept of why to volunteer because there's so many different reasons and it's, um, you know, some some obvious and and some for specific reasons. So it really is, um, depends on you and what matters to you and what's important to you and um, what you want to stand for. Um, But we definitely all do have things that we believe in and things we stand for, um, people that we want to help. And so it's a matter of doing all that and um, incorporating that, especially at this time of year where there are people who really are in need. And also this time of year gives us kind of that opportunity because there are so many charities that, um, for example, my church does, you can um, pick a family to provide Christmas presents for uh, because they, they don't have the means to, and that's always really fulfilling. So um, I would say a major reason is because of the way it makes you feel as well as selfishly as that is, um, it really does make me personally happy to give to others. Um, and that's kind of the spirit of these holidays too, is giving and um, providing things for others to make them happy um, and taking away that um, selfishness from it because it's making you happy to see them happy. Um, So I would say volunteer because it does so much for the world. It's so needed and um, you're making others happy and really making a change. So I'm going to play the devil's card on this one and say that that's great (laughs) and uh, definitely makes you feel happy and everything but If you want to be selfish about it, why should I volunteer? You can get scholarships. Mm -hmm. You can use it on your college app as an experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're going to gain new skills for yourself. And it also makes you feel nice. So I can jump into those points later on, but I just want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. So we can... uh, (laughs) On top of that, you know, one of the big things about volunteering is it's free. Yeah. It doesn't cost you a dime. I mean, in some cases it does if you're going on like a big trip or whatever like that. But it's free to volunteer locally. It doesn't cost you anything. Sometimes you get a free t-shirt. Sometimes you get free food. Yeah. But it doesn't cost you anything. And I mean, if you want to give back to the community, like I always want to like do stuff for charity. I want to like donate toys and stuff. I want to mm-hmm. donate coats. But I don't have the money for that because I have bills to pay. You're in college. You're in high school. You don't have money. So if you want to get back, it's volunteering is the easiest way because it's it's free. It doesn't cost you anything, and we all love free stuff. You're gonna go to the free movie showing on campus. Why not go to the free volunteer day? And I always felt I feel like I didn't do enough volunteering at college, and they had like would have like days of service. And one day I was walking back from. Um, breakfast and I was like oh, I feel like there was something I wanted to do today and this whole big group of like half the campus comes up and they're all wearing t-shirts and they're coming back from the service day and I'm like that's what I wanted to do <laughs> and I missed it and I wish I hadn't so like don't go back thinking because now I have fewer outlets for that um, for me to go and like find those volunteering and especially being on like a college campus being in high school there are so many opportunities that are presented to you yeah. that people are just saying, oh, here's this opportunity to go volunteer. As an adult, you have to go seek that out, and it is more difficult. It should not be because I should be proactive, in it, admittedly, but it is, with it being so available to you, why don't you just you know take advantage of it? Yeah, I just want to bring up uh, 
a sponsor, if you will, that they've done a lot of stuff with us and mm -hmm. we've worked a lot with them is do something.org. And do something.org is you can just jump right on their site and you can find a cause that you're passionate about and they're probably gonna have it. And so yeah. you can jump right in and join whatever you wanna do. And that's gonna be tied to you specifically. So in the case where you might be in a local town, your college town, and they're not doing something mm -hmm. you're very passionate about, you can go up with these guys and they have this site dedicated to all those things. And they actually offer scholarships too, which yep. I mentioned briefly. So do something.org, I'd, I'd recommend jumping on and checking it yep. out. Uh, one of my main things was in uh, high school, I, I always volunteered for a soup kitchen. And that you might think is, what are the skills you're gaining? I can ladle soup and, and feed people. Mm -hmm. That's not a skill. That's not the skill. The skill is communicating with people. You're meeting these people that you've never met before. They're coming in nine times out of 10. They're so grateful and so thankful and they just want somebody to talk to. And the stories you hear from these people are incredible and inspiring. So sit down, talk with people. You never know the background of somebody. They could have, you know, I don't even want to get into details, but these people are all incredible and all have different circumstances. Listen to their stories. You're gonna gain the skills to communicate one-on-one -on -one with people better. You're gonna be able to take that and do podcasts and <laughs> YouTube videos. And you can use that skill in so many different scenarios. It's unbelievable that you can take that and you can bring it into customer service, you can yeah. take that and you can bring it into presenting, you can take it and yeah. there, there's a lot. So don't think of something as, oh, I'm just volunteering at a soup kitchen, I'm, yeah. I'm dishing out food. Think of, think creatively of what you're gaining from this yeah. experience. And you're getting that skill, you're gaining these stories that mm -hmm. you can then use. So if you have a college app and it's what's yeah. one of the most life-changing things that has happened to you, you can talk about your experiences at the soup kitchen and talk about somebody that inspired you. Uh, another example is I worked at the little general hospital for a little while and there was a guy outside that had no legs, he was in a wheelchair and this will like never leave my mind, he was smoking cigarette butts out of the, the ash can, like the, mm -hmm. you know, the tray where you, you smash them out. And so I talked to him and he was telling me all about his life with addiction and how he's mm -hmm. overcoming it and he's still addicted to nicotine and cigarettes and this guy basically poured his heart and soul out to me and I was... 16 mm -hmm. you know so that's something that i was able to write about on my college mm -hmm. app and, mm -hmm. and um i imagine it did a lot for him too to have somebody to talk to and connect with and what you're really doing for him as well in that in that right mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely and that's a uh, just to jump kind of to the de-stress and the volunteer and bring those things together even if take the time to talk to your friends and family mm -hmm. and really listen to them because you never know when somebody's on that brink mm -hmm. of doing something terrible or you know they, they might be ready to to snap and then years later they'll probably loop back to you and, and tell you hey mm -hmm. you know you reaching out to me for the holidays and I had nowhere to go and you said do you want to come to my house yeah. that meant a lot to me and I was in a really dark place at that time yeah. so do that like it's it's you know. Yeah, and while you're feeling like stressed and like really focusing on you and how you're feeling and maybe feeling like a little bad for yourself or just like, you know, harnessing all of that, doing stuff for other people can really help you have the perspective that not everything's about you, your life's not that hard and, you know, kind of just put things in perspective for you to move forward and be like, all right, everything's going to be fine. It's mm -hmm. really not that big of a deal. Another thing with volunteering is that you can, you can make a lot of new friends with it. Um, people that you've never met before so especially as a freshman in college especially if you're really shy in high school um, finding these volunteer opportunities and going to them gives you a chance to like interact with other people who maybe are your age maybe a little bit older than you um, and it can help you make those friends you know if you do you, like in the first week or something um, you do a volunteer trip or you do like I um, I think in my first month I went to the Ronald McDonald house um, in Burlington and we cooked a meal we didn't get to sit with the people who ate the meal but we cooked a meal for them and then we went back and like a week later I was sitting alone at lunch because my friends were in class or something and someone comes over and like oh hey we did the Ronald McDonald house thing and I'm like yeah totally come on sit down and we you know made a new friend um, so it's an easy way to connect with people not just who you're volunteering to support but people who are also volunteering who share the same values as you and uh, people I find are just always, I mean, no matter what it is, are just so grateful. I know that um, 
my freshman year of college, I volunteered raking leaves because that's just where I thought my you know skill set could best be used. <laughs> and it was just for you know a group of elderly uh, people around the Burlington area that just didn't really have the capacity to rake their own yards. And you know they would come and watch and like sometimes bring us out drinks and food and things like that. And you could just see in their eyes that they were so happy. And um, the scope of how you volunteer can be very different as well. So like raking for one day uh, is something that I did, but I also uh, volunteered for a semester through Champlain uh, as a volunteer income tax assistant because I'm an accountant and I help people of lower incomes uh, do their taxes and get a refund and things like that. So uh, what you can do, you can do a wide variety of things and sometimes you can use your major or your own skill set uh, to uh, find what's right for you. Um, I think that's really important as well. Yeah, and that can get you a lot of experience with stuff too, especially, yeah. um, I know we don't have, a, we probably don't have a lot of grad school students um, who watch our podcast, but my dad, when he was in law school, worked for Volunteer Lawyers Association. He said, he's way out of law school now, and he goes, I will never take that off my resume because it shows that I've done pro bono work. Um, it shows that I got experience from that. So it can give you experience, it can give you job experience that'll be helpful to you, it'll be helpful to the people who are um, benefiting from it, and it might show you something that you want to do eventually. You might want to work in a nonprofit area of the industry you wanted to do, or it might show you that you don't want to work in a certain area, like if you wanted to be like a corporate accountant or something like that, um, and then you like go and work in this nonprofit, or, um, or you volunteer um, like Peter did, then you might say, oh, this is what I want to do. And there are nonprofits, there are colleges that like, will hire um, accounts to do help like that for people with lower incomes. So you might say, this is something I'd like to do with my life, and it might, it might show you what your dream job is. Yeah, I mean, that, that pretty much recaps the volunteer. Why should I volunteer? It's kind of a very broad mm -hmm. topic of, you know, it's kind of selfish when you think of the question, of why, why, why yeah. you know, that's my time. But you're gaining skills for yourself, you're refining skills depending on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're getting the opportunities to get these great stories. You get to give back and feel great about it. And it's, it's just, it's a wonderful thing to do, not only because it makes you feel good, but because you're gaining all these things. So do it. All right, so our last topic today is all about CX Gives Back. If you're new to the College Express family, then you might not be aware, but we have an annual, this is our second annual event that happens every year in December where we pick 10 days where we are giving back to the, the community. However, there's a twist to it. It's a giveaway to you, our viewers, but we're giving back to all these different companies. And when I say companies, I mean communities because we buy from companies that give back to the community. So the package that you get at the end of everything, if you win, stay tuned for details, <laughs> is a a big giveaway bundle. There's all sorts of things. There's uh, pencils that you can plant that grow into trees. There's uh, arts and crafts supplies. There's a whole bunch of goodies in there that is really exciting. There's also going to be gift cards that you can win. I believe we're giving out a hundred and fifty dollars of Amazon. Don't quote me on that, but there is over a hundred dollars of Amazon. That's a fact. <laughs> so. The big meaty part of this is is the giveaway that gives back. It's going to be running from December 10th through the 21st. We exclude the weekends, so the weekends are free. You don't have to do anything. But if you go to collegeexpress.com slash giveback, there's going to be a calendar there. It's like an advent calendar where some of the days are going to be locked. You can't click on them. But as soon as that day hits, you can click on that calendar square that's going to open up just like your regular advent calendar it pops open and there's going to be something in there to either enter for our giveaway at the final there will be a video to look at there'll be an article to read there's all sorts of things that are going to help you out during the december time and as i mentioned certain days we'll have amazon gift cards certain days we'll have entries into the final giveaway and this year we're doing something new and it's every single time that we have an entry into the final giveaway, if you tag two of your friends, instead of getting just one entry, you're going to get five entries. And so that's a huge thing. We want to share the love. We want to share everything out. We want to have those communities you know, really feel what we're doing here. We have a unique opportunity as College Express in reaching out to our viewers. 
that not a lot of companies have. So we really want to drive that forward. And I'm just kind of interested because Kara and I did this last year. Marie and Peter don't really know too much about it, but given the general overview, I just thoughts, what, what are you guys thinking and uh, ways that we could improve it potentially? Yeah, I uh, always think it's really cool when companies give back or have like a division that um, helps the community and gets out in there, um, is willing to donate or share or have events and things like that. So it's really cool, first of all, that all those companies are willing to help us out and um, really get the word out. Um, and then it's cool for us to be able to give to our users who um, are really important to us and have a special place in our hearts. So having that opportunity to connect with you guys as well, I think that's really cool. It kind of has the best of both worlds. Yeah, and I, I, I just think this is such a fun sort of event that you're doing. Um, I know the Love Your Melon beanie is something that I have like four of in my house because everybody in my family is obsessed with those beanies. Those awesome. They're all such great causes. Um, I'm super jealous of the person that's going to win this bundle. I don't think I'm eligible. <laughs> um, so uh, good luck to everyone. Uh, yeah. Some great stuff. Yeah, so uh, just to recap again, it's uh, our second annual event, so really go out and grab it. We, we're trying to up everything year over year, so luckily we have these companies that have reached out to us this year after seeing what we did last year. Last year we bought from everybody. Uh, we have the exact same budget, so we're able to buy more this year because companies were donating to us this year. We really want to reach that out, so when you're sharing it to other people and when you're participating and you're doing all these things, it's bringing awareness to what we're doing so that we can keep growing this year over year over year. And our goal is to just get bigger every year to really provide for the community and, and show that we care. And we, we want to give those gifts to you and you have that that feeling of being giving back because you, everything is, is bought from them. And it's just something to think about, like, as you do buy things, like companies that are um, donating whatever percent or, or helping their community in some way. Uh, it's just something to think about, like, you might want to go with those brands instead and really consider um, what companies are doing things for the community and to help people. Um, and just your, your purchase is making a difference. So just something to think about as you are Christmas shopping or whatever it is, um, but just have back in your mind that some companies, their products are helping the community. So um, really ideal to go with them. Corporate social responsibility is always a win-win. <laughs> so always try to support those businesses. Yeah, I think, and just to bring it back to our company too, is College Express is what Kara and I mainly focus on. Mm -hmm. Peter and Marie don't work with College Express directly. They're guest speakers today, which is great, and we thank you for, for being on the show. Thanks but, for having uh, us. Of course. <laughs> but uh, our larger company that we all work for, we do charity events every year too. Yep. Uh, so this past year we had a silent auction which raised over five thousand dollars and we can talk about that uh, Peter and I look ridiculous right now because we have mustaches. <laughs> uh, we're raising money for men's health right now so there, there are all these these different avenues that you can do and, and have these charities and again CX gives back is a, a unique opportunity where we can really drive it ourselves and have our, our viewers <clears throat> on there so and don't just stop where we stop. So we're going to do this giveaway for December, but yeah. don't just stop there. I mean, um, there's the, what's the soap company? The, the, the hand in hand? Yes, hand in hand. Yep. So hand in hand makes soaps. You have to buy soap anyway. So why not just continue to buy from them? And then you're also benefiting other people. So don't just say like, I feel like a lot of times, and this doesn't just go for CX Gives Back, and like Tyler said, we we as a company we do stuff throughout the year but a lot of people will focus just in like November December on giving back on bringing back to volunteering don't just stop in at one part of the year do it all year round um, try to look for these companies I mean you're gonna have to buy these products anyways why not do something why not buy it from a place where your money's not just going to yourself but to other people as well so instead of buying like $40 pair of shoes that is just for you, buy a $40 pair of shoes where someone else benefits from it um, and things like that. Yeah, Kara brings up a great point. It's we're, we're bringing awareness because now is the time that everybody thinks that people are in need and mm -hmm. you, that this is the time. But there's more months out of the year. Yeah. So if you have the opportunity and you have the means, 
it's a great way to give back to the community while you're buying something that you personally need as well. So we suggest. Birthdays happen all year round too. Don't just buy for Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa. Buy for Festivus. birthdays. Festivus. Buy for birthdays. Buy for Valentine's Day. Buy for uh, Memorial Day. Like, <laughs> just, just don't think of it only when it's at the front of everyone's mind. Try to make it at the front of your mind all year round. Yeah, definitely. So uh, just to wrap it up, the giveaway is coming. <laughs> So this is uh, going to be airing the first week of December, which means the week after, I believe, the Monday after, yep. the final podcast is up. This giveaway will be live, so if you go to, and I will put it in the description, collegeexpress.com slash giveback, you're going to be presented with that calendar. The first day will be unlocked. And to give you a sneak peek, because it won't be up yet, It'll be a vlog where you have to answer a question by me, Ooh. and you could win fifty dollars in Amazon gift card. Woo-hoo. So make sure Christmas make sure to stay tuned and get on that because it's uh, it's gonna be exciting. So enjoy. So that's our podcast for today. We hope you enjoyed learning all about how you can enhance your holiday experience. Thanks to Peter and thanks to Marie for joining us today. You guys had a lot to contribute and we greatly appreciate you guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Hopefully we'll have you guys back on at some point. Anytime. So, as I mentioned, uh, the CX Gives Back is coming, so pay attention to that December 10th. Keep your eyes locked. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, anything college-related, if it's while you're in high school, while it's in your college years, if it's your grad school years, just let us know. Sound off in the comments below. Say what you have a question about, and we'll design a podcast specifically around you guys, and we'll answer your questions there. So keep it locked on College Express, and we'll have a new podcast up at the start of January, the first week of January, the new year, and we'll catch you guys then. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.